forgot what day it is because we skipped an episode this week. So today is Monday. A, today's day. Welcome. Hot news. Brett. Go news. Now. Go go gadget news. Go go gadget news, which is we got Intel news today. Intel it's an Intel day. That's it's not it's not a day of the week. It's Intel day. So first up, we got benchmarks coming out about the Intel DG1, which is the SDB uh, card that they put out, which is supposed to be their first iteration into discrete graphics. And it turns out that it performs worse than an RX 560 and a GTX 1050 Ti, which are cards that are several years old at this point. However, that isn't such a big deal if the DG1 isn't going to be priced more than $50, or also this would be an integrated GPU on the upcoming CPUs that we're expecting out of Intel. So if you get 1050 Ti-ish, a GTX 1050-ish performance on the actual CPU, that's phenomenal. If it's a card you have to buy externally, it's, it better be ultra low power with no power pins and also be low profile and basically be the replacement for the GT 1030. Otherwise, I don't see its place in the market. Obviously, this isn't the only card that we're expecting to come out from Intel. We reported in a previous episode of Hot News that they are working on higher end versions of it. And in fact, we saw one where the die size was just gigantic but that's not necessarily gonna come out to consumers either. That would more likely be in a server environment. So DG1, kind of disappointing, not exactly everything that we're looking for, but it could be good enough to use for some people. If it's integrated, I'm totally happy with that. But what's been integrated with Intel for a while is not going anywhere. They've been, they've integrated with their couch. They are a couch potato. They've not gotten up from Skylake in quite a few moons and because of that, we've seen hardly any, if none, IPC improvement on their CPUs. IPC improvement, for those of you who are just tuning in, is basically how many things a processor can do every time it ticks. So with one tick, you would expect it does one thing. With AMD, they went from a certain amount of things that it could do on its bulldozer tick. And then when Ryzen came out, it could do 52% more things per tick. So that's the IPC improvement that we saw from AMD when Ryzen came out. And we've slowly seen IPC improvement with every architecture relaunch that AMD has done with Zen. But we haven't seen that from Intel. All we've seen are clock speed gains and power limits increase to get more power out of it, but nothing that actually makes it more efficient or more instructions happening per clock or cycle, however you want to say it. But that's about to change. That is about to change because we've got reports coming out about the IPC improvements of Willow Cove, Golden Cove, and Ocean Cove. We're getting off of lakes and we're diving right into the coves. Willow Cove, which is supposed to be the upcoming architecture that's gonna be featured on a few things and potentially will be backported to 14 nanometers and will be in the Rocket Lake chips if all rumors check out. That is going to have a 25% IPC uplift. So the next gen Intel chip likely will be 25% faster than the current Comet Lake stuff just by being existing. And then on top of that, Golden Cove is supposed to be 50% better than the current Skylake and Ocean Cove would be 80% better than the current Skylake, which is a large improvement in IPC gain in just a short amount of time. Obviously, AMD has been showing us what IPC iteration should be, as well as things such as node shrinks and then just general power efficiency increases as well as adding cores. AMD did what the future was supposed to be and Intel has stayed in the present. Well, no longer Willow Cove should be 25% faster, which is enough to make sure that Intel would then have the lead as long as they can keep clock speeds around the same, they would then beat AMD's upcoming Zen 3 if indeed Rocket Lake is 25% faster on the IPC. So take this giant grain of salt, Still not quite sure if that's gonna happen. Obviously, we've been expecting 10 nanometers out of Intel for quite some time. So we'll see if we ever get there. But where we won't get is Coffee Lake is gone. We, in case you don't remember, we've made two videos on the UFD Tech channel where I tried to make coffee with my computer. Once was with regular Skylake or KB Lake, I can't remember. And then another time was with Coffee Lake. Check out those videos right up there. You can see a blast from the past, Brett. Anyways, 
That's going to be discontinued Intel going end of life on the 8th gen chips. There are 31 different CPUs that are going to be gone. You can check the list down below. And we talked about this on our Hot News live stream yesterday, which you can come follow us, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. Watch our live streams over there. And essentially what this does mean is that Intel is going to come to your house and shoot your PC if it does indeed have an 8700K or the like in it because they cannot have such failures out in the open. They got to get rid of them. Sorry to you who has an 8700K. You just, it got, it has to be just, it has to be put down as they say. And Intel wants to put down something else. It's benchmarks. They want to put down benchmarks. The CEO, Bob Swan, coming out in a virtual Computex announcement saying that Tiger Lake is coming out this summer and that it is quote unquote, the undisputed leader in mobile computing and PC in innovation. And then further continuing to say, we should see this moment as an opportunity to shift our focus as an industry from benchmarks to the benefits and impacts of the technology we create. The pandemic has underscored the need for technology to be purpose-built so it can meet these evolving business and consumer needs. And this requires a customer-obsessed mindset to stay close, anticipate those needs, and develop solutions. In this mindset, the goal is to ensure we are optimizing for a stronger impact that will support and accelerate positive business and societal benefits around the globe. I thought benchmarks was measuring the impact that something had because it's a mark, a benchmark. It's marking where how it does. What? Sounds weak, but okay. This is weird, obviously. How do you have an undisputed leader if you have nothing to dispute them on? Well, actually, I guess that's how it works. If you have no measure of success, then everything looks like it's okay. If you can't compare it to anything else or you ignore the truth of what is out there and the standard that should be upheld, well then everything is permissible and everything is just free for all, which you know might be a commentary on what's going on right now or it might just be a commentary on the fact that Intel is too big for their britches, realizes that maybe they don't have a competitive advantage anymore and instead of actually acknowledging that, they're taking it and just saying, hey, look over here, we society. We, part, we do thing, societal benefit. But let's talk about a benchmark that nobody can refute, or maybe people can refute, I don't know. I, people like to just argue about nonsense these days, like whether it's Yanni or Laurel. Well, AMD has sold half a billion GPUs since 2013. 533 billion GPUs. That is a benchmark of sales. Benchmark. That's gotta anyways. We gotta get off of them. We gotta stop reporting statistics and facts and numbers. Disgusting. Anyway, since 2013, AMD has sold 553 million versions of its Radeon stuff with the PlayStation and Xbox accounting for 29% of that total or of the total, PlayStation's 20% and the Xbox one is 9% if you can't see how that explains the different approaches that the console makers are taking to their next gen. Sony's just like, we're gonna sell PS5s. Microsoft's like, we're gonna sell games. Because you can't sell consoles now, can you? You didn't. Anyways, you can take a look at the breakdown, but AMD, half a billion shipments, according to John Petty Research. But according to research, aliens are real, and that's not the segue. I was going to say AI, but I stuck with aliens. Aliens exist. I'm not like you guys. 12 majestic lies. AI coming for your jobs, taking your spouses, uh, replacing everything you held dear. So, Microsoft is replacing MSN journalists with artificial intelligence. There's reports coming out from Business Insider and Seattle Times that Microsoft is working on terminating contracts with journalists and replacing them with AI. There's some reports that this may just be the editors of the articles, but then there's also reports indicating that it's the people who actually write the articles. This isn't something that's actually new. In case you haven't perused the depths of YouTube lately, there are tons of AI news stories where it's clear that the script is not written in a normal human way. And then also the voice is completely computer generated. Now you can get rid of that uncanny valley voice effect by just making it so that people have to read it and then they hear their own dumb voice in their brain, which I am so sick and tired of it. I, I hate my, my brain AI, come replace my brain please. And Sega coming to replace what you do with your hands. Coming out with the Game Gear Micro has a 1.15 inch screen. You have to buy four of them and they all come with different games on them. And for the four pack, it's like $200. 
It's a 240 by 180 pixel screen, has a mono speaker, a headphone jack, and takes two AAA batteries. In case you remember the original Game Gear, that thing took, I think it was six AA batteries, and it chewed through them in like a matter of hours. It was a nightmare for portability. But now the Micro isn't, but it's also really dumb because you have to have the different colors to get all of the games. Who is this for? This is for Sega fanboys which we talked about earlier in the week, the upcoming Sexbox, Sega Xbox, that was supposed to be unveiled with Sega's announcement. Well, it turns out that that wasn't the big announcement. That's actually just foolhardy rumor sadness. But we got foolhardy reality instead. I absolutely prefer the rumor of a Sega branded Xbox Series X because what we got instead was Sega's Fog Gaming, which, in case you're following at home, Fog, kind of a play off of Cloud. However, according to reports, this is not Sega's attempt at being a Japanese equivalent of Cloud Gaming. And instead, it's Sega using arcades as a technical backbone with the CPUs and GPUs in arcade machines being used with ultra low latency to have arcades be available outside of business hours. So you're gonna stream arcade games to arcades at home or arcades that are outside of arcades without having to build the hardware? What is, what? I'm not sure I'm understanding. Maybe I'm just too dumb, but what is fog gaming? What, I, I, I can't even, I can't even process what's happening there. And while we're on the topic of Japan and everything that's going on with Sega, there's also another Japanese company that's looking to take over what everybody else has. That was a reference to the cloud gaming. Uh, uh, Famitsu, Fujitsu is coming out with a CPU that is gonna be targeted for high performance compute, which it's gonna be pretty good because it looks like it's gonna reach a peak performance of 400 petaflops, which is 100 times faster than the previous version that they had. I will call out the clickbait headline on this this, which is little known Japanese CPU threatens to make Nvidia, Intel, and AMD obsolete in the HPC market. What a 400 petaflop high performance compute server is going to replace AMD who's building exaflop servers? And Nvidia who just announced that they have oh, hundreds of petaflops in a single box? Is that what you're saying? But while we're talking about things being obsolete, let's talk about PCI Express 6.0. Yeah, I said six. We don't even have five yet. And if you just got on four, you are outdated and pedantic because PCI Express 6.0 is gonna be updated later this week, quadruple the speed of what you get in your pathetic paltry PCI Express 4.0. The uh, people, the organization PCI SIG is gonna give us more details on the progress and development of PCI Express 6.0 later this week. And Speaking of updates on developments, near replicants version 1.22474487139 uh, has been detailed a little bit by Yokutaro talking about things in an interview, basically saying uh, that he's not sure if things are the same as the PS3 version, and then asked, uh, is there gonna be a new ending? He replied, you're all free to expect whatever you want, and we're also free to betray those expectations however we want, everything is free long live freedom. And then it was also asked whether or not the upgraded version would be different. The producer behind the game said, there are just so many secrets, I can't say anything. <laughs> In any case, please look forward to it. I think even if the story is the same, you should feel something completely different with it being fully voiced. So you can feel good things with Near Replicant. And I feel good things about aliens. I feel like when they finally come out as real, we're all gonna be terrified of them as we should have been all along. That's my good feeling that I have towards this. And China apparently is gonna start helping later this year in September with their fast satellite dedicating some of its expansive 500 meter dish space to focus on aliens. Fast standing for 500 meter aperture spherical telescope. Gonna start looking for alien beeps and boops out in the internet. And by the internet, I mean the universe, which isn't the universe just a giant internet existential question of the day? I hear you guys. I hear you in the comments asking for it. You got it in the middle of the episode. How does that feel? Bamboozled. Yeah. You weren't expecting that, were you? And you weren't expecting that China has announced its first homegrown DDR4 RAM stick. The UNIL C semiconductor has come out with its own DDR4, 2400 and 2666 megahertz, respectively. Not too bad. So, China. 
starting to become more self-sufficient in its semiconductor capacity, which we've talked previously about SMIC and how they're planning on going mass production with seven nanometers towards the end of this year. Well, they just made a huge acquisition with the former general manager of Global Foundries China now joining SMIC. China really working to make sure that they are free from Taiwan's semiconductor industry in Korea. I mean, I get the Korea thing, like, because, but Taiwan? China, you want to be free of Taiwan? You sure about that? But you know who's not free of controversy? Riot Games. And just not talking about the controversy here at all, Valorant 1.0 has released. It has a new character, has a new game mode. It's out. Have you been playing it? Let me know what you think of Valorant 1.0 down below in the comments. I don't think there's any update to the uh, kernel level anti-cheat software. So that's up to you whether or not you're going to use it. But let me know what you think down below. And let me know what you think about the new Android TV dongle named Sabrina. Yes, apparently it's it's coming out and it's, it's, there you go, pictures of the dongle. And there you go, how do you recover from a pandemic slump in your sales? Well, you run things on sale when people have completely lost their jobs, 40 million people out of work. The easiest way to get them to buy more stuff is to make stuff cheaper. And apparently that's what Amazon's gonna be doing on June 22nd with their summer sale being codenamed Biggest Sale in the Sky. It's supposed to help jumpstart sales for sellers hit by the COVID-19 pandemic and it's supposed to be fashion oriented with 30% discounts at, I mean, it works. You make things cheaper and people can buy more of them, but what's not cheap, but I absolutely want, but will not be buying because, you know, it's expensive, is these new Dominator Platinum RGB memory sticks. Look at them, white and gold and RGB. So beautiful. I will have to say, after seeing the Dominator sticks in person, they are so much more beautiful than pictures could ever represent. They feel, they just have an aura about them that I really, really love. And my aura for this episode of Hot News is that it's over. It's, it's a dead aura. It's, it's like a dying light type deal. Not the game, but just like, uh, like loss of consciousness type thing. So without me losing consciousness anymore by rambling on, I'm gonna be done. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, get subscribed. Hit the notification bell in case you wanna be updated whenever there's a new Hot News episode that drops. I don't know why I'm speaking in a high pitched voice, but I went there and this is gonna be the end of the episode. Ha <laughs> ha!